guys, it's Kelly here and I'm back with another video. Today's video is featuring this cute little set from Gina K Design's newest release. It's called Best Fishes and I'm going to be using the stamps and dies to create a clear cover card. I thought that this was a super fun idea. So I have some acetate. The acetate I'm using is from Hero Arts and it is five by six. So I'm just going to trim down to the five to four and a quarter, but I'm going to leave the six. And that's because I need um, that half inch to fold over the front of our card. So I am just going to lay this. If you have a scoreboard, that's also fine. I'm going to use my uh, trimmer here and then just a Teflon bone folder. And I'm going to score at just a half inch in. I'm not going to fold it over and press it down with my bone folder yet because there's some other steps that I'm going to do with it. But I'm just going to score it so I know where the top of my card is going to be. And then we're going to move on to the next step, which is lots of fun. And that's using alcohol inks on our acetate. So I thought it would be a really fun idea with the little fishes. Um, to have to create kind of like a little ocean um, that they're swimming in. <laughs> so I'm using some alcohol pearls um, and then just some teals and blues. The thing with the um, acetate, if you want it to stick with the pearls, you have to use the, um, what is it called? The alcohol medium, alcohol mixative. Uh, otherwise your pearls will flake off. So you can't just use regular alcohol with them. You have to use their medium, the blending solution. That's what I wanted. Um, otherwise the pearls will just flake off. Uh, I know from personal experience. So here I just wanted it darker toward the bottom, lighter towards the top because that's how I'm going to be doing my other background. And then I just used the Tim Holtz hand tool to blow it around until I was happy with it. I did end up going back in and adding more um, of that blending solution just to get it to move around a little bit more. It's really hard for me to only do one background with alcohol inks because they're so fun and so fast. Uh, but I was like, you got to eye on the prize. You got to keep on moving we're <laughs> because we're getting ready um, for a trip. So I'm like having to line up all of my things so that that way, uh, you know, I don't leave you guys with nothing uh, while I'm gone. And um, that means I just, there's just a lot of things to accomplish. So I was like, just do it. This card, uh, which you'll see when we get to, isn't that so pretty? It's so pretty. Um, this card is actually for my father-in-law from my kids because while we are gone, it will be his birthday. And so I wanted to have his birthday cards done so that I could pack them up to take them with us. So here for the, this is like the background piece underneath our clear cover. Um, so I'm just doing some ink blending. Uh, I chose the same kind of like tealish blues that I did with the alcohol inks so that everything would look really nice together. And I'm just doing it again, same way that I did the other one, darker towards the bottom, lighter towards the top. So just like a nice little teal-ish gradient. Um, and then we're going to do some little sun. Well, are they sun? Yeah, they're sun rays, even if they're in the water, because it's from the sun. So yeah, we're going to do some little rays just to make it a little bit more interesting. Now, if you didn't want to do the clear cover, this would be a perfectly acceptable card front on its own. Uh, but I just thought the clear cover added a little extra something to it. So I'm using Gina Kay's um, Masking Magic. I trimmed it down to be the size of an A2 card. And then I'm just going to go through, randomly cut a couple of rays so that I can lay them down on the card. And then if you watched, well, if you watch any of my videos, you know I do all of my ink blending twice. And this is no different. So you saw me do it one time. I am going to do the second time with my masking strips in place. So I'm just going to put down three rays um, to be my sun rays. You can make them as thick or as thin as you want. Um, I wasn't overly concerned with that. They're really just kind of setting the scene. The fish are going to be the focal point. So once I had those where I wanted them, I went ahead and folded them back over so I wouldn't pick them up. And of course this ink blending is sped up. I'm not this, I'm not this quick. <laughs> um, so I just went through and did the same colors over again. So now I have uh, a two layer blend that's going to give me really good saturation. And then the lighter pieces will be where those rays are. 
it just, I don't know, I felt like it just made the background a little bit more interesting rather than just doing, you know, my usual blues or teals for an ocean background. The other thing that I'm going to do, because I love the shimmer, this is totally optional, any of it's optional, honestly, um, is I'm going to use um, some Perfect Pearls. Normally you see me scoop it out, like the powder, scoop it out and then mix it with water, but I actually had plenty of left over um, to do one layer. And then after I did it with the masking on I was like I really just kind of want the shimmer all over so I'm going to just do it again I'm just going to pick up more shimmers and splatter them on um it just adds a little extra something here's all the fishes I stamped this actually was really great in this stamp set you get so many fish um different sizes different they're facing different directions so it makes a card like this where we're doing lots of layering really really easy because there's just so many to choose from you can stamp them out at all at one time color them all up at one time and then die cut them out so i totally appreciate how many options are in this and it gives me the opportunity to do something like this where we have two layers and not be repeating the same fish over and over again so I'm stamping these down in Gina K Amalgam ink. This is safe for uh, alcohol markers and I will be coloring them with my Copex. I'm not gonna show you all of the coloring of the fish. I'm gonna show you um, some solid colors. I'm gonna show, I'll show you all the color blends, of course, the, all the markers I'm using. Um, but I'm gonna show you some solid colored fishes and then some where I blended the colors together. Um, and I'll just, you'll just see that here but some of them were just repeats so i like repeats of the colors i mean not of the fish we got in we got a fish for everything in here um so yeah so i went with really brightly colored fish since i have that kind of dark teal background and i really wanted them to stand out and be super fun my father-in-law who this is his card um really loves the dad jokes and so the punniness of you know sending birthday fishes um is right up his alley like it's it's right up his his alley for sure so then on the inside i wanted to do the uh you're a great catch but i wanted to personalize it and so i you i did put grandpa in there you're a great catch grandpa and then the kids will well caitlin won't sign it maybe i'll have her hold a pen and or do her handprint or, or something along those lines um but that way then uh peanut will be able to sign it for him so that way he has um, little cards from the kiddos and I thought it was a very fun way to do that so uh, before we talk about all of the vacation prep I've been sitting on this story forever it feels like forever but also it felt like I was in poop palooza for forever so here is your high sign it's a it's about dog it's about dog poop if you can't do dog poop mute me because that's what we're going to talk about so this <laughs> guys <laughs> so bad it was so bad this is the joy of owning animals right unconditional love and endless amounts of poop so this two weeks ago now i think it was um molly yeah it's yes it started with molly so it was a thursday and eric has been doing his own meal prep and my husband likes spicy food, okay? He really likes spicy food. And so he makes himself chipotle bowls to take as lunch to work. And he had taken off Thursday to actually go over and mulch my uh, my parents' yard. Him and Nathan went over and did their mulch. And so when he came home, he heated up his chipotle bowl. Well, when he was stirring it all together, he dropped a piece of chicken. Molly grabbed the chicken before Eric could grab the chicken. Like two days later... I wake up in the morning and there are, there's like, there's poop, which is unheard of. Like my dogs typically do not have accidents in the house and you can tell it's unhappy poop. Like this is not a regular situation. So let them out. It, there was one spot on the carpet and one spot by like the rug by the back door. Like you can tell, like she was like, I need to go out, but it was the middle of the night. So there was nobody to let her out. So then the next day is the 4th of July. 
so at this point, like, I give her some pumpkin, um, because that's what they tell you to give them, you know, to settle their tummies. And so I give her some pumpkin, and um, so I'm thinking, like, okay, hopefully the next, you know, that'll help settle her stomach and we'll be good. We hosted the 4th of July. I wake up in the morning uh, of the 4th of July. We're going to have a house full of people in, like just, you know, four or five hours, I open the bedroom door and there are piles and piles and piles of poop in my hallway on my cream colored carpet on the landing of the stairs. So I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so bad. And Eric hears me and he was like, what is it? And I'm like, dude, there's, (laughs) there's poop everywhere. So, and like the whole house obviously reeks and there is a special kind of panic when you know you're about to have company over and your whole house smells like actual poop. Um, So I go down the stairs. I'm like trying to find my way down the stairs through these piles of poop. Molly is in front of me. um, So I'm watching her as we go down the stairs, you know, trying to circumvent all the piles. And then I get to the back door and let the dogs out. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so bad. And then I turn around and realize that the poop has followed me because there was a p- <laughs> there was a pile on the rug that I didn't see. And then I stepped right in it. And then I poop stepped in my slippers all the way to the back door. Just step, poop, step, poop, step, poop. Yeah. Great. Awesome. So we are, Eric wonderfully goes through, gets, the, we have like a little um, carpet cleaner. He goes through and then cleans all the carpet. And then you, of course, you know what that means. Now I have spots that are like extra, extra clean um, than the rest of the carpet. So now I need to get somebody to come in and actually like clean, clean my carpet. So After that, I was like, okay, like clearly we have a situation. So I fast her for 24 hours. I start her back on a chicken and rice diet. We don't have any more issues. We're like solid two days with no poops. And I was like, oh my gosh, thank God it's over. So like, I mean, I don't have any issue making chicken and rice for my dogs, if that's what is necessary. Their family, I love them. Obviously, she had an upset tummy. Um, so two days go by and we're good. Like, there hasn't been any any accidents. We're like, all right, we're, we're all right. And then on the third day, we get up and there is um, just piles of poop all around the kitchen table on the hardwood floor. Like, just liquid piles, piles, piles. And I'm like, oh no. Because here's the thing, like I was starting to get really nervous that she, like there was something wrong. Like she had intestinal cancer or something like that because she's older. And so I was starting to get really worried. And when the chicken and rice fixed it, I was like, oh, thank God. Like it's probably just something she ate, which we do think it was the Chipotle chicken. Here, all the coloring is done and I'm going to go through and do my die cutting. Um, And so... I was like, I think that's, that's what it was. Well, now I wake up and there's more poop and I'm like, I'm so scared that now something's really wrong with her. And so I, Eric's already gone to, no, he was home. It was a Sunday. So I clean it up, but I noticed when I was cleaning it up, like the cleaning supplies were already on the kitchen table. I was like, why are they already out? But then he was up the night before with a jelly bean in the middle of the night. And so I was like, well, maybe there was an accident last night or something. So then he gets up probably about a half an hour after I do. And I was like, there's more, like there was more. And he was like, yeah, I cleaned up three piles last night when I was up with her. And I was like, I think something's really wrong with her then. And he was like, no, it's Emma. So now I have two dogs. So Molly's over it, but now Emma's started it. So then we just like... I have to go through it for like another week, another week of just liquid poops. So um, here, let me talk to you about what I'm actually doing on the card. <laughs> uh, so here is the, what is it called? Gen- gents? I can't remember. It's Gina has a set that has like all like the boys names, you know, like grandpa and uncle and father and all that. Um, 
So what I'm doing is I'm stamping directly on the background. You want to make sure your background is completely dry before you do this. Test your embossing powder before you commit. I treat it with my anti-static tool and then I am stamping the you're a great catch and the grand part and then I'll clean this off and go back and stamp the PA to make it grandpa um, and finish off, you know, my word. Because I, I think there's another option there, like pop or something like that. Um, and then this is how I decided I was going to customize it. But you have to make sure your background is dry, 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 because distressed things are meant to be embossed with. So we do the same thing with Emma. The only difference was I didn't give her the pumpkin right away. She had already been not eating for, like... I think it was like nine hours by then. So I was like, I'm just going to faster. So I did that. And then we started the chicken and rice diet, but it still wasn't great. It was like more under control. She wasn't going in the house, but outside in the yard, it was still bad. We had to make a vet appointment to get them up to date, like their regular checkup anyway. So I was like, all right, well, we're just going to take care of both. So, um, I had to take in stool samples. So basically I just threw a container in the grass and let her just spray poop into it. It was terrible. Um, but thankfully there was no, like everything checked out okay. He said it was probably just something that they ate. He did give her medicine for it. And now we are, we're back, we're back to normal. But guys, it was two weeks of just continually cleaning up feces. It was a rough go. I love my dogs. But that was rough even for me. So now that's that was my my poop palooza and then 2.0 story um, here. So I've glued everything down with Gina K Connect glue. I don't love the white outline. That's no secret if you watch my channel. So I am going to go in um, and just color the white outline to match their backgrounds um, or get them as close as possible. Um, so I did all of that so that they would blend in and just be really brightly colored fish on this, you know, fun kind of tealish background. Going to trim off my little tails that might be hanging over. And then, um, I'm going to do the same thing for the acetate cover. Here, this is my actual card base so that my kids aren't writing on the card, the second front. I don't even know what you call this. The second layer of the front. Um, so that way they can write their own personal message to grandpa on the inside. So this will actually have a clear cover and then a regular card front to lift up so that the message will still be private. Um, you probably wouldn't necessarily have to do that. You, there's enough room on here to write if you weren't concerned about that. So now I am going to adhere everything to my card front. Um, by the way, I heat emboss that on the Tranquil Teal uh, in white. So I'm going to add these in. I didn't really have any issues with them adhering to the acetate at all. Uh, I just made sure that I pressed them securely down and then once they were dry they were dry. They weren't going anywhere. And then um, I also did the same trick with coloring in the white. Uh, for this one, I didn't try to match the background. I just picked a teal and then I went with it for all of them. I don't think that it looks weird or strange. I, I don't even think that it's noticeable uh, if you wouldn't have seen them already with the white edge. I think they blend in pretty well. So that was really simple. Now we have to attach this. So this is how the card will look once it's attached. Um, so that's where that little lip comes in. And I'm going to use just some really strong uh, adhesive tape. This is the tear tape, I think from Honeybee, I think is the one that I have. So I'm going to get it all lined up on the front. I'm going to turn it over and then just run a line of this um, on the back side where our half inch that we scored will stick to it. And I didn't have any issues with this holding at all. So I'm just going to peel off the release paper, fold it over, and then I am going to um, go back in and smush it down with my uh, bone folder because it did kind of pop up a little bit. Um, but I, that's not anything that's overly concerning to me. 
Um, cause I figure once it's, well, first of all, it laid down a lot better once I hit it with my bone folder. Um, but once I have it in the envelope for a while, that will also calm it down. Um, but then, yeah, that's, that's the, the whole card. I think it came out super cute. Um, just a nice little added extra, you know, something to make the card more interesting. I hope that you guys will give this a try. Thank you so much for joining me and I will catch you on the next video. Bye.